Okay, let's talk about trammeling or squaring the wings. This is a wing I'm building now. Obviously, I just did that already yesterday, and I'm finishing this up today. But uh, I'm going to just discuss it a little bit. I know I had a lot of problems, and a lot of people did uh, early on, and there's a lot of forum posts on the uh, Cub Crafters forum about it finally. I had a long talk with Mitch one day and he kind of straightened me out and got me in the right direction. I then sat down and wrote a good explanation on the form and also I sent it to Mitch. Uh, Mitch has included that in the uh, manual. Uh, when you get to the page behind the section on trammeling the wing, you will see a whole sheet that says, here's one of our customers wrote this up and then at the bottom he says, thanks Dave, that was me. Okay, so I just wanna, obviously I'm not gonna be able to trammel this wing for you, but I wanna talk about and explain just a little bit about uh, what we're doing. And it'll maybe it'll help it, um, help you understand a little bit what's going on. We're gonna square the wing. The manual says to put a couple of rib, nose ribs on like this one in the number 12, so it'll lift the string line up off of the spar. I don't, I just take a little block of wood I leave this off because I hate bumping into these things. I just leave them off. Uh, I put a, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the, for some reason, the manual says put a string on the front where the string, the front really isn't that important. It's the back that's very important because the back spar obviously has to line up and be perfect where you're going to mount your, uh, install your flaps and your ailerons down here. So this by, by far is the most important thing that you want to do, or you want to do. But I run string lines both ways. If this is straight, obviously, this side's got to be straight or something's wrong with your drag tubes or something not being completely in there. When I put my drag tubes in the fit fittings, I take uh, some bungee cords or ratchet straps and I pull the two spars together at all the drag tubes. And then I measure with a tape measure across there between the spars. And I haven't found one to be a 32nd of an inch off, but that'll also show you if you don't have one seated maybe all the way. So in any case, I go ahead and I run a string line just for the heck of it. I run a string line on the front and the rear spar. I put a block up here just to raise the string off the spar on all four corners. I then take a string and then I put the string and stretch it tight just using clamps and uh, that makes it tight and then line it up with one of the edges of the spar, like the front edge of the spar, then come over to this side and do the same thing on this spar, front to back. Okay, pull them tight so you've got a string line, lining them up right perfectly with the outside edge. Okay, we put our drag wires in, all the drag wires uh, in the EX3 are different than the EX2. The EX3 uh, will have a thicker wire, that's this wire, which will always go on the bottom where the wires cross, okay? And they're always going from the inboard rear to the outboard forward uh, spar and the opposite with the small wires. The small wires, again, will always be on top where they cross all the way down through here. So in this bay, you'll have a big one and a small one another big one and a small one, another big one and a small, small one. And then on the EX3, then this one is just the last bay. It's just two thin ones, okay, on the outside bay. But the same thing, you're still putting that, that one on the top that's going from outboard rear to uh, inboard forward. So you make sure you got those right. Then what I do is What's gonna happen here in this bay is that we're gonna to have to pull these drag wires out because we have to install the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks actually have holes running through them, all the way through them. And those drag wires are gonna go through these holes in the tanks all the way across. So we've got to trammel it now, but we've got to untrammel it to install the fuel tanks and then we'll put them back through. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to set the distance right here, right here. We're going to set this distance between here and the end of this screw at something predetermined, just say an inch. And that's what we're doing is I'm making it exactly an inch using a micrometer. So if you take the micrometer, 
I got the Dave Embry forum up here as I'm following along on my notes on how to do this. But you can take your micrometer, you can put it on, I use this end, measure, you know, from there to the end of the screw, give yourself an inch, go ahead and tighten it up. Same thing on the forward bar. So we've got an automatic inch right here, and it's gonna stay an inch, we're never gonna change that. Um, whenever, whenever you install these, then you're gonna run across, and on the first bay, then as we adjust the, the, the uh, wing, we're gonna work with these two wires obviously first. So this is the one coming from the uh, inboard side of the rear spar coming up uh, through here, it's the thick wire. So um, so we're gonna end up adjusting this wire here and then we're gonna adjust this wire on that side, okay? So what we're gonna do is go ahead and, and set these at one inch and then when you got your string lines run, you're gonna uh, just go ahead and line up, line them up, and then just literally take the spars and with your hands, move them around, you know, until they uh, line up. Now, the first time we're gonna do it, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna square this first drag tube up. We wanna square this with the spar and uh, to make the first bay uh, completely square. So we're not worried as much about now the string lines as we are about the squareness of it. So we're just gonna take a big square and one that I have that I use is just like this. Okay, cut the corner off of it. And where we're gonna basically measure, it's kind of hard for me to show you now because I've got the braces for the fuel tank. But we're just gonna put it in here like this put it up against the spar there, put it up right here against this, and we're gonna see how square it is, okay? See there, it's perfectly squared like that. And I do it from both sides. I'll do this side, then I'll do that side. So once you've done that, and you'll, you'll physically move the spars around, just jerk them, grab one side and move them, just move them back and forth as you need. If that one needs to go that way, move it that, just go, Go push it that way. Put the square up against here, square it. Then take your two, these two tubes that we're gonna drag wires and they're coming back through this side here and go ahead and just finger tighten the nuts up, okay? And, and by the way, the rest of these wires, what I do is I go to the forward side on the rest of them, in other words, we have to adjust the drag wires on this first tube with these two wires. So one's gotta be adjusted here and that one's gotta be adjusted there. But from now on, all the rest of the adjustments I'm gonna do only from the rear spar, okay? I'm not gonna do any adjustments on the front spar. It just makes it easier to stand back there. So I'm gonna go through here and for the, the forward spar ends, I'm just gonna set them all at about an inch. Just set them all back about an inch, go ahead and uh, lock that one in, you know, with the double nut. All, all the way down through here, every one of them on this side. And after I do this first bay squared with this drag tube, I'm not gonna come to the front side anymore. I'm gonna stay on the back side. So now we're gonna finger tighten this wire and then that wire over there, just finger tight. Then we're gonna take and, and get a, a wrench, make sure these are loose. And on all the rest of these back here that you do, make them really loose. I mean, not even close to being tight. Back those nuts way off and leave it so you can move these spars around. They'll move a lot. And so don't, don't snug them up. Don't even get them close to being snugged up. So now we've, we've got them snugged up. I take a pair of vice grips and I put one on each wire. One on this wire just hanging down. One on that wire hanging down. Then I take a Sharpie and I put a little blue mark or whatever on the tops of each wire. Cause as you turn it and adjust it, you know, you want to make sure you're not just spinning the wire. So that way you can watch the vice grips or hold on to it while you tighten the nut as you're doing the adjustments. And you can see if the wire is spinning or not. You can see I still have one mark over there yet. I hadn't gotten off. Okay. So don't worry about measuring here yet. We're going to tighten these up first so we know we've got a good tight straight drag wire so go ahead and the the big as i say in the forum the big wire has different threads 
than the small wire. So if you take this one and put your wrench on it, on the nut, and you turn, not on this end, but on the other end, but if you take it and turn it a half of a turn, and then you go to the small wire and do it a half of a turn, it's not the same. That one's gonna be actually tightening more because of the threads are wider spaced. So one turn on that big wire is more than one turn on the small wire. So when I'm doing the adjustments, I'll take and I'll snug them up by hand so they're both about the same tension. And then I'll say, okay, everything's square, looks good. Then I'll take the small wire, which this one is, and I'll put my wrench on it and I'll turn it a half of a turn. And then I'll go to the other side and on the big wire, I'll turn it maybe, you know, three eighths of a turn. So not all the way around to a half, but from the top, maybe turn it around to about right here. And on the small one, of course, you're going a full half of a turn. So I go one side, then the other side, then this side and the other side, back and forth. And I'll check the square a couple of times, you know, to see if maybe I'm not getting it completely equalized and make sure the square stay in there. Once you kind of get to where you think it's getting close to the 13 to 15 pounds at a half of an inch, you can go ahead and take a Sharpie, put a, and measure. I just take a ruler like this, put it on the drag wire right there, and then come out, come out right there, and then come over a half of an inch and put a blue mark on the wire. So then whenever you, the way you're testing it, is to take your little fishing line weight, nice little plane, and you're gonna turn it on, obviously, have it some pounds. You're gonna put it right there. And then you're just gonna get over the top of it and you're just gonna pull that wire, you know, until you're, until it's over the half of an inch mark and then you look and read what you got and you want it to be between 13 and 15 pounds, somewhere in there. And then you've adjusted it correctly. So you just keep, keep making little turns, half turn, three eighths of a turn, half turn, three eighths of a turn until you've got your 13 to 15 pounds when you pull, put, pull the small wire a half of an inch over like that. doesn't matter which wire you do and you only have to do one. So the small wire is the easiest one to do. As the tension increases in each bay, it, it increases the tension on both wires. So you don't have to adjust both wires. You only have to adjust one. Uh, but on the first bay, like I say, because we've got the ends that are over here, we're going to adjust them on separate sides like that. So we're going to adjust each wire on, on separate sides. Okay, so if we got our 13 to 15 pounds here at one half of an inch of pull, we put our square back on here, it's all square, both sides, then we're good to go. Now note that you may actually get a little bit of flexing uh, in this tube when you get that. It may, you may, I mean, you may see it's a little bit out of square both sides, but opposite ways. That means there's just a slight bow and that's, that's okay. They say that's, that's kind of normal. And on this particular one, for some reason it isn't. Most all the ones I've done before did. Okay, so another thing to think about is that once you've squared a bay up, once you've got your tension in it square, nothing you do from this point forward is gonna affect this bay. It's done. I can pick it, move it, drop it, whatever you wanna do. It's not moving, it's done, okay? So we're finished with bay one. So now we just come back to bay two. Bay two, again, we're just gonna work off the back side. We're not going to the front anymore. So now we're gonna take our string lines and now is where we're gonna look at our string lines. I go down to the end like this. Let me turn that off. Of course, that would come on right now. But I'll go down to the end or the tail or the outside end. And then I can look at the string line here, which is my main one. This rear needs to be perfect. And I can look at the string line here. And literally, if you're looking, and I, only, I don't care about any of this right now, forget this. The first bay is done. I could care less about this. I'm only looking at the second bay. So if you're looking at the second bay, literally go up here to the second bay right here and look at the string line. If it's over or out, just pull it. Just physically grab it and pull it. If both sides will move together. You might go to the end and grab the outside outboard end of the ribs if you want to and actually just kind of pull them back and forth, wrenching it back and forth. 
until you just see the string line in this bay straight. I still don't care anything about that. Do let it do whatever it wants to do. I want it square, you know, with the string line here. So what we'll do this time is the same thing. The fronts, we've got an inch out there and it's just gonna stay there. We're gonna come back to this side. We're gonna adjust this one, which is for that wire. We're gonna adjust this one, which is that wire. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn, this is the big wire here. So this one over here is gonna get three eighths of a turn. This one's gonna get a half of a turn. And just go back and forth, making sure you do one, you do, do the other until you've got your same thing, 13 to 15 pounds, okay? Once that's done, boom. Put the second nut up there and tighten it up. Second bay is done. It's not gonna move, it's not gonna change. That did not affect this, no matter what we did. And anything we do here is not gonna affect those. And it doesn't matter what's going on down here. We're just working one bay at a time. Go to the third bay, same thing, all the way down to the end. You do all that and you're done. That's all there is to it. And the, th the trick to it is understanding that once a bay's done, it's done, okay? Uh, and it's not affecting anything else. Anything you do here is not gonna affect anything you're doing here. You don't have to adjust separate wires or whatever, you don't. You just uh, literally physically move it and then adjust the wires together. You know, if you're way off, for me, that's working about three uh, eighths, you know, of a turn on the big wire and about a half of a turn on the small wire is making it work. Once you've got that done, then, and everything looks good, you string, you look at your string lines all the way down here and they're good, especially the back one. Then double check that you're tightening up all your, all your nuts on here and then come back and take a cut off. We all use a Dremel tool, but anyway, cut off, leave me at least five threads, cut off the excess ends of all these over here. Those you won't have to cut off because you left them at an inch. You will have to cut the one from that big wire going out there because remember we left the inch here and so the remainder stuck out there. So once that's adjusted and tightened up, cut the end of this big wire off and you're done. Now what I do when they're all tightened up again, and I come back over here to these two end ones and I double measure it again. I double make exactly sure exactly what I got. I may have set it for an inch, but maybe it moved just a little bit or something. So I measure again, how far from the fitting to the end. And then I write it. I don't know if you can see it right here. Where am I at? There I am. So it was 0 0.985 is actually what I had on this one. And this one over here is exactly one. Okay. So when we get ready to do our fuel tanks and put them in, we've got to actually pull these two wires out. And we're gonna loosen the nuts off of here and slide that wire out that away, okay? And, um, act, well, yeah. And then we're gonna take that wire and loosen it up and slide it that away, put the tanks in and then put the wires, you know, back in. So what happens is, Obviously, we're messing up this bay by loosening it up, but then when we put them back in there, we're just going to tighten this back up, put these back on, tighten them down until we've got exactly what we said before, one inch on this one and 0.985 on this one. Our tensions are back to exactly the same, and our wing is good to go. So let me know if you have any questions. If I left anything out, hope that helps.